Last night, I had a lengthy discussion with someone in the comments section of my previous video. They opened by saying, I now put forward the following question and expect a rational response. And I was just thinking, oh boy, this is going to be a good one. Uh, not surprisingly, it turned out that I could not expect the same from them. They asked how natural processes created information, such as DNA, from non-information, and then asserted that information arises only from previous information. And I was just like, what? What does that even mean? So I asked them, what is non-information, and how do you tell it apart from information? And they gave me the example of a blank sheet of paper and said, no being, no matter how intelligent, could ever garner any amount of knowledge from it because it contains none. So I said, well, what about the size, shape, and color of the paper? What about the material it's made of? That's information. It does contain information. And they said, no, because we're actually the ones assigning information to the paper using prior information, such as our knowledge of sizes, shapes, and colors. Which is just ridiculous. I mean, information exists independently of our understanding of it. Just because you don't understand a piece of information, that doesn't mean it's not information. So I tell them that, and they say, no, of course, not, that's not what they meant, and then they accuse me of evading the issue because I didn't explain to them how DNA originated, and I quote, how did the decoding mechanisms learn to understand the code? As if the chemical reactions taking place in cells somehow have a conscious comprehension of what they're doing. Uh, I don't even know why I kept going after this. I mean, you want me to explain DNA to you? Do you want me to explain Google too? And I still want to know how they're defining information and non-information, because what words mean is important, and they're the one who brought that up in the first place before they said I was the one evading the issue. And then they said that this is somehow a problem for naturalism, the view that everything in the world is natural and that no supernatural things exist, because it contradicts, quote, all we know about information and its nature. You know, it really would help if they explained what they meant by information, as well as the nature of information. So I ask them, okay, if naturalism is somehow insufficient, then what are the better answers that supernaturalism provides? And they say, an infinite creator that is the source of all things, like DNA. So I figure, okay, I'll just play along with this. They said information only comes from information, whatever that means. So if information like DNA came from this creator, then that creator must be information too, right? So what information did the creator come from? I knew this would end up either in an infinite regress or special pleading, and they went for the special pleading. They said, no, the creator isn't subject to the laws of the universe because it created the universe, so it's not in the universe. Which is just great, because as soon as I start talking to them on their own terms, they go right ahead and act like their proposal is now a law of the universe. And then they went on to say, quote, information arises from intelligence, intelligence arises from information, how could one arise without the other, which they later denied ever saying. So I tell them, they're saying this creator exists in some place that does not have these laws, a place where information does not need to come from information or from intelligence. They are saying that such a place exists. And if they're saying that a place like that can exist, then why can't our own universe have the same lack of laws? And their answer was really just a repeated assertion that these laws really do apply to our universe. And they actually compared this to the laws of thermodynamics. They also mentioned other assorted fun stuff about how since the universe is finite, and infinity is the opposite of this, then the creator must be infinite. Uh, shortly thereafter, they told me it would be ignorant to assume anything about the creator. And I was focused on getting them to maybe provide some kind of proof for their original claim about information, if they're going to say that it's a law on par with the laws of thermodynamics. But I guess they thought this was just self-evident because they told me I should prove them wrong. And this was why I insisted that they define what they mean by information and non-information. I wanted a clear explanation of this so that I could provide an example of information coming from non-information, something that would demonstrate why they were wrong. The best I could get out of them was a statement that rocks have, quote, no underlying information system which code for their form, followed by information is that which gives instruction or otherwise decreases prior uncertainty or increases intelligence.
Alright, I stopped replying after the thing about rocks. Uh, the whole thread is in the last video if you want to verify that I'm not misrepresenting this person, but there were some things they said that I honestly just did not understand. And this inspired me to actually start learning about information theory, which by the way is absolutely fascinating, everyone should look into this, and I'll probably end up doing some videos about it. And before, it was obvious that this person was wrong in some way, but now I could see exactly what they did wrong. First of all, rocks have information, and the information that codes for their form is represented by their physical structure, the arrangement of their constituent molecules. But beyond the whole thing with the rocks, this person has no idea how information theory actually works. They said information can't come from non-information, and then later they said information is what decreases prior uncertainty. This is contradictory, because information that comes from non-information is information that decreases prior uncertainty. And the amount of uncertainty that is reduced is how information is quantified. Information coming from an absence of information is the foundation of information theory. Information is a measure of how much uncertainty has been decreased. For example, here's my favorite weapon, the penny. And you can play along with this at home. This time you'll only need one of them. When you flip a coin, there are two possible outcomes that are equally likely, and we are uncertain of what the outcome will be. Each outcome has a probability of one in two. So we flip the coin and we have an outcome. It's heads. Our uncertainty has been reduced. And we can actually quantify how much our uncertainty has been reduced. And that is a measure of how much information we've acquired. Now, if I mess up here, it's because I'm not good at math yet and I'm still learning about logarithms, but I'm going to take a shot at this anyway. Uh, the equation for this is the amount of information equals logarithm base 2 of the number of possible outcomes, which in this case is 2. So let's say x equals logarithm base 2 of 2. This can be expressed as 2 to the power of x equals 2. Solve for x, x equals 1. And the unit here is the bit, a binary digit with two possible states. This is why we're using the base 2 logarithm, the binary logarithm. So by flipping the coin and observing the outcome, our uncertainty has been reduced by one bit. We have obtained one bit of information, and that one bit of information came from non-information. Now, information theory gets way more complicated than this. These are just the fundamentals. But just from this, we can easily demonstrate that information comes from a lack of information. There is no law that says information never comes from non-information. In fact, the exact opposite is true. You could at least take the time to learn about information theory before misusing it to justify your preconceived notion of a creator. Otherwise, it's obvious you don't even know what you're talking about.